Hello, I'm Andrew Shipilov, Professor of Strategy at INSEAD. Today we have a privilege to welcome Mr. Yves Carcel at LVMH here in our studio. He's been credited at leading the company over the past 23 years as a CEO, and today we have him in our studio. Um, welcome. Thank you. So as the chairman and CEO of Louis Vuitton from 1990 to 2012, what would you define as the most important elements of leadership uh, needed to transform a luxury retailer? I don't think you can run a luxury business if you think short term. Um, you know, I was lucky enough when I uh, took in charge Louis Vuitton in 90 uh, to have a long history behind me. Uh, the House of Louis Vuitton was created in 1854 by Mr. Louis Vuitton himself, who invented the first modern trunks. You feel the weight of history on your shoulders, and you feel every day that uh, your mission is to know that one day that will end, but you will leave the company to your successors with more value, more history than it had before. The second thing is uh, those houses have, have a soul. Uh, people say DNA in the industry, but they really have a soul based on her, their, their history, what, what has happened around the house. You need to feel it. You need to, to live with it, uh, I would say, 24 hours a day. And you need also for in the company it's inside and for the outside world to represent that, uh, that soul. And what would you say were your most important successes? And what do you think were the most difficult challenges in this job? You know, in, in nearly a quarter of a century, I had few strategic decisions to take, and I, th I tend to think that they were the good ones. The first one since the, the beginning was to say, I want to control 100% of my distribution uh, for various reasons. Uh, the most important being that I already in the 90s thought that the success of a worldwide company would be to be very efficient back of house, to have a very efficient supply chain. And you can do it only if you have a good database. If you control 100% of your distribution, every morning you have the sales, uh, product by product, clientele by clientele, store by store, uh, all over the world. What were your key elements for the talent strategy at LV? You have to differentiate between very specific talents. If you want to penetrate uh, new sectors, like I said, ready to wear, shoes, watches, uh, jewelry, uh, later perfume. Uh, and you are not an expert, I'm saying not, not yourself, but your, your company in that field. You have to find uh, the best experts. I mean, I said the best is not one, but really somebody of the top league uh, of this uh, expertise. And that's why I told this story about uh, uh, Marjika, because I think uh, Bernardo was very right to push me into uh, recruiting one of the top talents in the fashion world. So yes, we, you know, in that field, you pick the talents where they are uh, for uh, people who know about ready to wear, who know about things, who know about, uh, you know, when we implemented lean management, it's so much easier uh, if you search the talent. And in fact, uh, at that time, we, we were searching talents in the automobile industry, you know. Toyota in Valenciennes was, was known as, a, you know, a recruitment source. So we, when we really made an evolution, it was really in the automobile industry for lean management and supply chain. You know, so, that specific talents. What were the characteristics of Mark at the time when you thought were particularly attractive to your company? His brain. You okay. Know. Uh, in the world of fashion, you have sometimes people who shine, but don't. Mark was always, uh, you know, very uh, elaborated. To give you an example, one of the biggest uh, artistic collaboration we did with with a success that was even much bigger than when we thought at the beginning was the collaboration between Mark Louis Vuitton and Takashi Murakami. And when Mark launched on uh, the runway in October 2012, the little uh, hairdresser dress uh, in 13 colors 
with multicolored bags designed by Takashi Murakami, that was an incredible wow effect because it was not the trend that all you know the agency were forecasting. It was really a, a shock, and I think by doing so, it changed the vision of fashion on the world uh, for for this very uh, specific period. So that's what I loved in Mark, this idea to, at the end of the day, translate into creativity, but. Before the creativity, there is an incredible brain. Let's talk about uh, relationships with other companies. So you mentioned that uh, one of your challenges and also successes was to integrate the value chain and uh, uh, basically become the owner of the stores and uh, of the distribution network. Uh, could you comment on the alliances or partnerships which you had um, at some point in time with distributors or with retailers? How important were they for the success of the company? And perhaps also talk about the successful collaborations with the suppliers. You know, even if you want to control the maximum, you don't live by yourself in the world of business. So you need, if it's, even if it's not financial, you need partnership. Let, let's start by, uh, by retail. Yes, I explained you why I thought it was very important to control 100% you know, of your, your distribution. I inherited from my predecessors because they had to grow very quickly in the 80s without having the management resources internationally. They took partners in most of the countries and the partners were playing an active role. Over time, I bought out all the partners and I decided in new countries to open by ourselves. Again, whether it was China, Russia, Mongolia, Vietnam, Kazakhstan, South Africa, we, we open by ourselves. Uh, the only partners I decided to, to keep is our partners in the Middle East, not only because they have values which are the same than us, but it's not enough in business. Friendship and value sharing is not enough. But honestly, the Middle East uh, is a very complicated legally and culturally. Decision makers there sometimes speak only Arabic. And, you know, I decided that it's important for us to continue to work with partners that could open doors and be our advisors. And we were the first one to organize a, a global joint venture for the whole Middle East where uh, we have the majority. Uh, still a geographical exception due to the complexity. But, but as I said, the, Partnership is not only a financial partnership. Uh, to understand really better your, the, the request and the needs of your suppliers, whether it's fabric suppliers, uh, tannery suppliers, met, uh, metallic pieces, what, whatever, uh, to help them to be efficient, at the end of the day, is at your benefit. You get better prices or you get better supply, quality of supply, you don't have you know, a, a period where you have no, no delivery and you cannot produce and you cannot deliver. And so to make them understand how you think, to understand how they work and to understand what kind of information which is not confidential uh, you can provide them on your forecast and supply chain, even if it's not a commitment, to have a vision of that might help them to organize better their supply chain and you will benefit. So really I, I strongly believe in, and it, it's, it's time demanding, and sometimes you have very small companies, so you have to be prepared to give them, transfer them expertise in supply chain with no, again, financial implication. And did you sometimes help suppliers to work with one another as well? You mean put them in contact? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And also, uh, you know, opening doors to sister companies. You know, that's, uh, in fact, what a group provides is talent management, I mean, cash, allocation of resources to sometimes smaller company that need the cash of the bigger one. At the end of the day, it's the role of the holding to allocate the money in the, in the vision of what the group should be uh, in future. The second thing is definitely talents, but we'll come back to that. The third thing is uh, 
to share information before the others, whether it's on a retail project, which is uh, the, who is the best lawyer there, uh, who is be the help, biggest help in you know this country in intellectual property uh, supplier, which is good by you know opening the door of Cisco companies. You defragilize it. You, it doesn't depend 100% on you. I mean, all, all that is uh, is win-win. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Yves Carcel. Thank you for coming to NCAD and sharing your experience with us. Thank you.